In this video, we're going to take a look at the reciprocal function, y equals 1 over x. Now this one can seem intimidating, but once you work with it a little bit, um, it's actually not too bad. I like to nickname this one the butterfly. Um, you'll see it takes a little imagination, I think, but it also does help you remember, oh, okay, this is the one, and we'll see this with curves in the first and third quadrant. This function also has asymptotes, which we have not seen with any of our other essential functions yet. And so asymptotes, if you're not familiar, are dotted lines that we'll draw on our graph, where our graph will approach these lines, but won't touch them. Um, that's always true with our vertical asymptotes. You have horizontal asymptotes too, and a conversation for another day is that sometimes graphs can cross sort of near the origin of horizontal asymptotes. But for these basic functions, these parent graphs, uh, let's just go with our asymptotes or lines that our graph will be guided by. It will approach but never touch. All right, so let's get started by substituting in some x's. So we'll start with negative 1, 0, and 1 and see how that works. All right, so if we substitute in negative 1, we see we get 1 over negative 1. So y is just negative 1. We actually run into an issue, I'll do a little scratch work here, if we try to plug in zero because we end up with one divided by zero. And so we can't have that, that's an invalid output. You can never divide by zero. Okay, so you can either write undefined, I'll abbreviate undefined or just put a dash. There will be no point on our graph where x is zero. Okay, so that's a huge clue that you have a vertical asymptote. All right, when we substitute in one, we're okay. We get an output of one. And let's do a couple more because let's, let's plot first. So we have negative one, negative one, and one, one. And we know that we're undefined at x. So let's go ahead and put that vertical asymptote in there. Just a dashed line. Okay, but that's not a lot to go on. So I think at least for just creating this graph for the first time, it's helpful to have a few more points. So let's first work with some positive numbers. Let's substitute in 1 half and 2. Okay, so when we substitute in 1 half for x, we end up with 1, do a little more scratch work, 1 over 1 half. So when you divide by a fraction, you just multiply by the, its reciprocal. So it ends up being 1 times 2 over 1. So our output there will be 2. And then when you substitute in 2, you get one half. Okay, so let's plot those. So we have one half, two, and then we have two, one half. Okay, and that already helps us a little bit. You can even imagine, just without adding these to the table, if you substitute in three for x, you get three one third as an ordered pair. If you substitute in four, you get four one fourth, five one fifth. So following this pattern, and just by some common sense observation, you see that no matter how big, or as your x keeps getting bigger, you get a y that's closer and closer to zero, but you'll never quite get to zero. And that's our huge clue that we have also a horizontal asymptote here on the x-axis, or at y equals zero. All right, so now hopefully you can see how the asymptotes are guiding our curve. We'll go ahead and sketch this curve in. Okay, and that looks really nice. Let's go ahead and finish the part of the graph that's in the third quadrant. And you can see that if you substitute in negative one half and negative two, you would get similar points. So when you plug in negative two, you get an output of negative one half. If you wanna record that, you can. And if you plug in negative one half, you get negative two. And so we won't sketch in all those other points, but we know that it behaves very similarly. My graph is a little bit off there. Okay, so this is what the reciprocal function looks like. And when you're creating this graph in the future, you really don't need all these points. You probably, when you know what the image looks like, will just need your original two, so that's this one, 
and this one. And then always draw your asymptotes on your graph as well. It helps show that you know they're there. And it also reminds you that those asymptotes guide and help, cur help shape the curves of your graph. Okay, so a quick note about the butterfly. I will just sketch this on really quickly. You can see that if you were to draw a little butterfly body, little head, antennas, the happy butterfly, and these are the wings, you kind of have a butterfly shape. So it takes a little imagination, but I think it does help you remember the shape of this graph. Okay, so cleared off the lovely butterfly picture for now so that we can do some of our analysis with our clean graph. All right, domain is the list of all possible X's. And you see that this one does have a big break at the asymptote at X equals zero. And so it's going to be very similar to some of our others in that it's almost all real numbers, but we're going to have to exclude one value, which is our graph cannot have an X of zero. And we saw that here in the table. Okay, so X cannot be zero. All right, so in interval notation, we do that by saying from negative infinity until zero, closed with parenthesis because we don't want to include zero. Use that union to state that there is another interval. And then we'll say open parentheses, zero to infinity. So it does end up feeling a little inefficient to use interval notation here. Sometimes for shorthand, you could say all real numbers, X cannot equal zero or just X cannot equal zero if you wanna think about it that way. But it is good to know that this is how you state um, a domain that excludes just a single value in interval notation. Okay, and you see we have a similar thing for the range. So we wanna list all the possible Y values. Looking from bottom to top, you see that the only break is along the X axis or when Y equals zero. And so the good thing is once you've learned how to write that interval notation once, for the range, let's clean that up. For the range, it'll be the same notation. This time we know we're just referencing the y's. Okay, this is the first essential function where we do not have an intercept, no x-intercept, no y-intercept because we have those asymptotes. All right, moving on to symmetry. Hopefully you're looking at this one and saying, wow, this feels very similar to x cubed or to the cube root of x, or even just the identity function y equals x. Okay, you start to feel that origin symmetry. So remember that just means that if you rotated this graph 180 degrees about the origin, you would end up with everything falling on top of each other, or it would end up looking like the same graph, even though it's been rotated 180 degrees. So we have origin symmetry here. Remember that means that you can call this an odd function. So I just wanna make a note of that. All right. So increasing and decreasing intervals here, let's use our trick of putting our pencil on our graph so we can see what's going on here because this graph is more complex. Okay, so you always read from left to right. Use the X's to describe what the Y's are doing. So put your pencil on and we'll start moving. And you can see you're decreasing very gradually here as you move to the right. And then of course, very sharply. And then you're decreasing forever around that asymptote. Okay, even when you pick up your pen or pencil and put it on the next part of the graph, you're still decreasing, 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 decreasing. So this is a kind of unusual graph where you are decreasing everywhere, but you do have to account for that break at the vertical asymptote x equals zero. So let's go ahead and say, well, we know there are no increasing intervals and we'll just have to write two separate intervals where we are decreasing for this function. So we'll say, from negative infinity until we get to that asymptote at x equals zero. Okay, remember you always use parentheses for decreasing or increasing intervals. You'll use the union and then you pick back up from zero to infinity. You are also decreasing. 
All right, so it's not quite as tricky as it looks. And once you get used to this, this, you can see this notation is used a lot to exclude zero. Um, so once you get used to it, it really becomes second nature. All right, and finally, let's just record our asymptotes. We've already talked a lot about them. We know we have a vertical asymptote, x equals zero. That's your y-axis. And you also have a horizontal asymptote, y equals zero, or on the x-axis. So this is the reciprocal function. It is a little bit more difficult of one, but once you get used to it, um, it really is no problem. And remember, just think it's got that butterfly shape about it. Curves are in the first and third quadrant.